Okay, you guys are all ready. We'll start the July 24th regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Are you going to do it? Here? Okay. Um, so we'll start with the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on this very jam-packed agenda is the public hearing, which we'll now officially call to order on the proposed changes amendments to our current town charter for the town of Stormington. Um, so I am officially calling the public hearing to order. And just so uh, I know you guys know this, but for everybody here, the Charter Revision Commission has submitted a final report to the board with their proposed changes. Um, I think, yes, I see you. Thank you. Ray Trebasachi, chairperson of the Charter Revision Commission, will share an overview. Um, so if you want to uh, come up here for the record, you can sit there if you want. Sure. Should have put these on already. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you guys. Select, select. Speed, speed work that. We're still selectmen. Select, select, <laughs> select, select <laughs> So, um, Is yours on just for the... Um, help, help. Can you push it? Yeah, Hello. Hello? I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. So, um, it's, it's a pleasure and an honor that uh, I'm able to deliver this report uh, that uh, has been uh, posted on the website with this agenda. Um, over the past three months, uh, the Charter Review Commission has worked very hard to get um, to this point, and it's been a collaborative effort uh, with uh, input from both the public and uh, town officials. Uh, for myself, I first want to thank the Board of Selectmen for um, giving me the opportunity to work with such an experienced and well-rounded commission, uh, David Lee, um, Marcia Standish, who I don't think is here, um, uh, June Strunk, who's uh, not here, and Lynn Young, who is here, and, and also um, I, I want to acknowledge the work of the commission attorney, Steve Mednick, who, who is here, um, and we've come to appreciate him as one of the state's most experienced uh, lawyers in this field. Um, so with that said, as we went about our work, we realized that there were two things. Um, number one, that this isn't the easiest task to do if you're going to do it the right way. And um, there are some time-sensitive matters that we uh, should deal with before we deal with other issues, um, which is why our report recommends that the voters be asked to approve the following changes to our charter. First, um, we would ask that um, the question be posted, should we hire a well-qualified town clerk rather than elect one? And similarly, uh, the second issue, uh, should we hire a well-qualified tax collector? Both of these recommendations recognize that um, the positions have largely become administrative, and uh, as the town has grown in size uh, and budget, uh, we need to have greater assurance that we will have the best people possible for that job. Um, the third uh, recommendation is that we increase the elected team, uh, elected term of the uh, first selectman from two years to four years. And similarly, that is to attract more qualified, the best qualified uh, candidates, you know, who are willing to uh, put their private lives aside uh, for uh, a pe the period of time that it takes and, and the, the uh, unsure that they're going to get elected, but for the period of time to uh, campaign uh, and, and that they have to put aside in their life for, for those four years. And so um, that's, we, that position is elected still. It's a more of a policy, although it's administrative, it's some administrative in nature, it's more of a policy setting. That's what the Board of Selectmen is all about. Finally, there were some uh, boards and commissions that were uh, um, identified as needing uh, some uh, change in their composition. 
uh, to better help them function, and we've addressed those in our report. Um, to be sure, there are other issues that we, uh, we did look at, but if we were to take the time to go through those and, 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 and do that adequately, adequately um, we wouldn't be able to deal with these four issues in a timely manner. So that's why we did that. We understand that if you accept our report, and we hope that you do, um, that that's the end of this commission. Um, we hope that you um, see fit to establish another commission after that, and, and all of us would be uh, willing and honored to, to serve in that so we can continue the work that we've done. That said, um, I want one of our recommendations is that the um, uh, is that each of these be posed to the, the voters, not as a whole package, but individually. So basically four questions. And with that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn it over for a few seconds to, to our attorney so he can address that process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chairman Mednick, if you would like to introduce yourself for um, the, happy, the camera. <laughs> happy, happy to do so, Madam Chairman. Sure. Sure. Uh, my name is Steve Mednick. I'm an attorney from New Haven. Um, I have an office downtown New Haven, Connecticut, and I've been practicing for um, as long as Methuselah, uh, <laughs> a number of years, and I've got his beard now. Um, and so thank you. anytime I hear about the four questions, I think of a holiday, but that's uh, a Jewish joke. The, uh, so, um, so let me talk a little bit about the, um, the process from here on. The, technically, what the commission is providing you with tonight is a draft report. Um, it's, uh, you can deem it a final report, and I think the discussions we've had, I think that's the direction we're going to take. But technically, it's a draft report. And so if you, uh, if you determine that it's final, that you've accepted everything that they've recommended, then it is final, they are terminated. As the chair uh, indicated, they are very willing to come back and work again. But once, the, once, the, once the commission is terminated, which would be tonight if you accept it, you can begin to start the process uh, in August of uh, recreating uh, a charter commission so that they get the month of August off, but they could probably start working in September if you name them in September, up to 30 days thereafter. Uh, I want to say something, if I may, because I've done this all around the state. You had a very creative and, and energetic group of people. You did a great job in selecting them. Um, they, um, they wanted to move much faster than I could. Um, I told them I'd, I'd go with them if I had to, but we, we did. We did slow it down, and they were creative, and, and I'd say the three of you have also uh, played a part in that and being able to bifurcate this process. I think you're going to end up with a very effective uh, chart. So what happens is once you approve it tonight, and we have the four questions that will be approved this evening, the only thing I will ask you when you do the resolution tonight is not only uh, have it um, tied into the general election, to have, have it stated that it would be effective after approval so that um, that's in the document, but it's not in the four questions. So I think that um, as part of your resolution tonight, if you could just say that it would also be effective uh, upon approval, that would be very helpful uh, to make sure there's no, um, there's no um, confusion or ambiguity about that. Once you approve, uh, the questions will be approved. I'll talk to the town clerk. The, the questions will go to the Secretary of State's office. They'll go on the ballot in November. They'll be on your absentee ballots. Um, within 30 days of your approval, so within 30 days of tonight, if you approve it tonight, we have to publish the changes. Um, and uh, it'll, it'll be a relatively easy one to do. Um, next year, we may have to publish the whole charter because we're going to be doing looking at some more global changes in the charter. But this year, it'll be a pretty uh, uh, relatively inexpensive um, uh, publication, but that, that has to be done within 30 days. And uh, once you do that, it's pretty much over. The other decision um, that I've included in here, and it's really up to you, um, in a lot of communities I recommend uh, that uh, they approve uh, the town clerk to go forward and do a, an explanatory text. And the explanatory text here will be pretty simple um, because the questions are pretty direct. Uh, next year, if we go through this process again, There'll be more complicated issues 
more extensive issues that need explanation. So the explanatory text, again, will, will be a very short document, probably a page or so, um, when that is done. And that's, that's the end of the process. And um, I have nothing to add on the substance, but I just wanted to at least talk procedurally about it. Do you have questions for anything on there? No, I think you explained it well when we talked about it at the yeah. previous no. meeting. Uh, I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like that? Thanks. Thank you very much. And um, before we continue with this, I do just want to say thank you to all the members of the Charter Commission. I know not all of you are here, but you guys worked really hard in a really quick time period. Um, and thank you also to the attorney, Mednick. It was great to get to know you. So thank you. Um, so I do, before we open it up to anyone else who wishes to speak, I did just want to note that we did receive written comments from Rick Newton of Mystic. And he noted that he's in agreement with the changes, but included additional changes and corrections as presented to the Charter Revision Commission at their public hearing, uh, which they didn't act upon as they kind of just went over. And um, he is requesting that they be considered by our board at this time. Um, and his suggested changes were included in your packet. Um, and we can, we can talk more on that after we see anybody else here. Um, do you? Anyone else here to speak about the charter for the public hearing? Yes. Thank you, Can you all hear me? Okay. Mark Bancroft, 81 Mary Hall Road, Pawkatuck. Uh, as I spoke at the Charter Revisions uh, public hearing, I would encourage you to approve the uh, proposed changes. Um, I believe that two points. First selectman should not be two years. By the time you get to know anything about anything in town politics, you could possibly be out. You wouldn't run an $86 million business like this, so let's run our town with an $86 million budget. Make it a four-year term. At least you get some meaningful time for the first select person. Secondly, um, same thing professionally, town clerk, town uh, tax collector, um, they got their professional positions. Although they don't require a, a college degree, they do require a great number of certifications. If they're elected, you could have someone in and out constantly every two or three years, whatever the term is. So by making professional positions, it gives them the recognition that they deserve and uh, you don't, the town won't suffer. Imagine you have a $86 million budget, 82% of that comes from tax levy. If you have a tax person who doesn't know what they're doing, it's a lot of money to lose out on. You have a town clerk that doesn't know what they're doing, you could have a, uh, a void election process. So they're professional positions, let's make them professional positions. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. And you went off. Going once. Twice, um, Ben or Deb, any other comments or questions for part of the public hearing part? Um, I guess we probably we probably be in the discussion. Um, really, just getting a chance to look at uh, Rick Newton's comments now. So. Oh, we, um, we could talk those. We could talk about them now. Um, so, I guess my take on that would just be: I think the Charter Revision Commission did a good job of explaining. Back, that that's why they're willing to reopen um, is to look at all the kind of more things that will take more time and detail um, and trying to get some of the time sensitive items onto the November ballot is why they worked so hard to speed everything up. Um, so I, I think you know, Rick has some good points in there, but they would, in my mind, need to be part of the next version. Okay, so just, just to clarify, because again, I'm just, just getting a chance to, to look at these comments. You would. Um, Say that, that none of them uh, pertain to the, the four items that we're, that we're de dealing with tonight. I didn't believe so. Did, no. Um, yeah. And when he came and presented to you all, did you feel like. He was good with the changes before you and we explained the remainder would come in to point out. No, I think he made some good points, but they all pertain to what would be the next phase of work. Understood. Yeah, that was my, my take too. Perfect. Fine. Okay. So, no other comments? We're going to no. 
Oh, okay. One, one more. <laughs> I don't have a gavel for anyone handed One more. The communication from Stephen Bissett as well. Um, that came through, and then they, the Charter Revision Commission might be able to talk to that because they addressed it directly, but I believe it was basically a moot point. I don't know if Ray or Lynn want to speak to that. Um, I'm okay. sorry. But I, the comment, comments from Stephen Bissett this week. Yeah, so, so for, first of all, uh, I, I can't remember, practically speaking, when there has ever been uh, a tie that has had to be broken by the town clerk, number one. Number two, um, if the town, uh, uh, the voters of the town approve the change from uh, elected to a higher position, that won't become effective until next election cycle, no, uh, uh, November of 2025. If this is done the right way, we can, we will have the time to visit that and, and make that I don't know if it's a. I don't. I don't think it makes practically makes any difference. Number one. Number two. I don't know, know that it's necessarily a bad thing. Um, number three. It requires uh, more deliberation and um, research. I think on the part of the commission to make the best decision possible, and perhaps also to um, to get input from the public. Okay. So. I appreciate the fact that um, that Mr. Bissett sent you this communication um, just over the past couple of days. Um, but, you know, we've had two public hearings. Um, we've given a great deal of thought and deliberation to our recommendations. If we were to take a step back now, uh, we would have a problem in getting those four issues to the voters. It makes no practical difference, number one. And number two, I think that hopefully um, when the board is, when the commission is reconstituted, it can be addressed. And um, I, hope the, I hope the voters of this town see the wisdom in our recommendation, um, and, and then we'll be able to address that issue. If they don't see the wisdom in our recommendation, then we don't have to address that issue. <laughs> Just because we have, um, thank you very much, right? Um, we have Attorney Bendick and also our town clerk here. Did you guys want to add anything? Because I know you had commented back to Stephen's question. Yeah. Just to piggyback on the chair, the re reality is that uh, if, is this one, uh, can I speak this way? Yeah. Can you hear me? If the um, town clerk is eliminated in this November's election cycle and we create another commission. That's not the problem. I'll try to be more effective with the mic. The, uh, <laughs> sorry, I should be better. I should have better stage presence than that. Sorry. But uh, it was the long one you could do kind of a Mick Jagger thing. But the, uh, um, Steve, Steve, we're not eliminating the town clerk yet. <laughs> not the lim no, eliminating the elected town clerk. The elected town clerk. We would never do that, but the, uh, the elected town clerk, that won't take effect until next November uh, when it comes right down to the deal. We'll still have an elected town clerk through the next election cycle. If there is a second phase of the charter revision, it will be effective next November. It will be simultaneous. That's the only point I want to make. Thank you. Sally, anything to add? Okay. Thank you. Clarifying, we're not eliminating the town. So the public hearing portion of this is now closed. Now we're going to move to the discussion part of this um, for our board. So as we just heard, the Charter Revision Commission has submitted their final report. Our next step, if we so choose, is to vote on the proposed changes. Uh, just as a reminder, which I think we kind of covered, but uh, if we did want to make any suggested changes to the final report, we would have to send it back to the Charter Revision Commission, who would have an additional 30 days, but really probably just a couple days, <laughs> to review and submit a new report, um, as they are obviously working to get this on the November ballot. Um, so I'm going to ask for a motion, and we could discuss more. Uh, could I get a motion to approve the proposed changes amendments to the Stonington Town Charter as submitted by the Charter Revision Commission in their final report? So moved. Second. All right, now discussion. Um, oh, should that motion include 
a language that's effective upon approval, yeah. or does that have to be? That will be in the rest of the next part. The next part of the resolution. Okay. Yeah. I have a very long resolution to read it. We yeah. get there. Um, so are you, yeah, are you, do you guys have any more discussion on that? Or? No, I feel like we went over everything in detail at our joint meeting. Um, you know, I've reviewed the draft and it reflects everything we discussed, so I don't have anything else to add. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that joint meeting was really helpful, and thank you all very much for um, all the time and effort you put into this. So, okay, so all those in favor, say aye. 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 The motion carries. Okay, so now, with the final report just being approved, our next step now is to approve a resolution, please bear with me, um, that will be including the ballot questions, and then let me know if I miss anything. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen approves the final report of the Charter Revision Commission dated July 18th, 2024. Be it further resolved that the Board of Selectmen, in accordance with CGS, Connecticut General Statute 7-191E and F, hereby adopts the following questions to be placed on the ballot for a referendum to be held on the general election of November 5th, 2024. Number one. Shall the charter be revised to fill the position of town clerk by the selection of well-qualified candidates to be selected through a process, hiring process upon advice and consent of the Board of Selectmen, thereby eliminating the elected position of town clerk? Number two, shall the charter be revised to fill the position of tax collector by the selection of well-qualified hired candidates to be selected through a hiring process upon advice and consent of the Board of Selectmen, thereby eliminating the elected position of tax collector. Shall, number three, shall the charter be revised to increase the term of the first selectman from two to four years? And number four, shall the charter be revised to A, add two appointed alternates to the Board of Assessment Appeals, B, reduce the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission from seven to five members, C, add two appointed alternates to the Shellfish Commission, D, add two appointed alternates to the Water Pollution Control Authority, and E, reduce the Commission on Aging from 12 to nine members and adding three appointed alternates. Be it further resolved that the Board of Selectmen authorizes the town clerk to publish no later than 30 days after approval by the appointing authority, the Board of Selectmen, the proposed revisions of the charter in a newspaper having general circulation in the municipality with a notice that a complete copy of the charter is available in the town clerk's office and that a copy shall be mailed to any person who requests a copy as required by Connecticut General Statute 7-191D and moreover, a copy of said charter shall be available on the town website and be it further resolved that the Board of Selectmen authorize the town attorney and charter council to continually review the revisions for errant and non-substantive editorial revisions through the publication, and be it further resolved that pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 9-369B in subset A of the Board of Selectmen, authorizes the town clerk with the assistance of the charter council to prepare an explanatory, explanatory sorry, text specifying the intent and pr purpose of the proposed revisions of the charter that is the subject of the ballot question that will be voted upon on November 5th, 2024. Said final text is subject to approval of the town attorney. Do I hear a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Second. Don't need to read that again, Madam Chair, please. <laughs> um, wait, yes. Just make sure it's effective upon adoption. Uh, just making sure that's the right thing about these questions. Yeah. Okay. Effective. Can you say upon that? adoption. Effective upon adoption. Yeah. Um, okay. Do another, just to be official. So moved. Second. Okay. All those, any more discussion? Uh, I just have one question about the final paragraph um, referring to the explanatory text. Uh, how will that be publicized? Or will, whether, where, and how will that be? Go ahead, yep. Speak from here. Yeah. Um, what will happen is the town clerk publishes it. Um, the, uh, it's the only, it's one of the few things the town can do and spend money on in a quote electoral process. It's not an advocacy document. It will just say what's in it. It can be on your website. Uh, it's, uh, she will use the explanatory text in uh, absentee ballots when people 
Right into the absentee ballot. She will send the explanatory text with the ABs. It's posted at every polling place in town. Um, you can post it wherever you want to post it. But, uh, I would rec highly recommend that you make sure it's on the website. And and it will uh, be done with your assistance. Yeah, I'll, I'll help her with it. Um, the town attorney has to legally sign off on it, um, but I'm working very closely with Mr. Eastep, and, and so uh, this will not be a difficult or controversial one, but technically the town clerk does it, and the town attorney has to sign off to make sure it's not a political act. And it doesn't have to be published as a, as a legal notice? No, not at all. It, I would put it in on the town website. Uh, if you choose to publish it, you can, but we're not required to. Thank you. And we can also look, I know Westerly, when they did theirs, had that same text, and so did East Lyme. So we could also reach out to see if they have other places they publicized it. Anything else? No, my only other, because I was going to ask a question about the um, effect of our on approval. You're just going to add that to that last section. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make you read it yet. So. <laughs> yeah, it'll just be at the end. Okay, thank you. And, and I guess my only concern about the, the last paragraph, going back to the last paragraph again, is that to make sure that it, it does not contain any, any advocacy, but I'm, that's why I'm happy that you'll be involved. Yeah. Legally, we cannot, and that's why you have the town attorney sign off on it. Thank I'm you. Sure it's not happening, so. Good. Good. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Good, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you all very much. You're welcome to stay. We obviously don't have to. Um, I did just want to say, because we were talking about it, um, I, we can talk more at a future meeting um, when we have more time, but um, given that you're effectively sort of you're no, you're like on um, temporary, <laughs> not paid leave. <laughs> um, but um, maybe yeah, we will open it up, probably effective now to see. We'll give it you know a full month plus to see if people or anyone else is interested. And then um, you guys won't have to re-interview. Just um, be sure you email us just to say you're still interested in it um, if you are. And then we'll, if anyone new comes in, we'll do interviews. And if not, maybe we can get you guys back up and going by. End of September, probably. Give you guys a nice little holiday. <laughs> but thank you very much for all the time you put into it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so now, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a safe trip back. Um, we have our final two interviews for the Ethics Commission. Um, Madam Chair, yeah. uh, now the first step. I wanted to make a motion to make a minor amendment to the agenda. Oh, um, now, if now is an appropriate time. Uh, on item nine, appointment planning and zoning commission. Yes. Um, I would just like it to change it to appointments. Well, Why? Uh, so that we can address the alternate position. We can't do that. It's still open position, right? You're still accepting applications. Yes, Why? we can. Because it came in afterwards, so we have it as an open, and typically we give it a decent bit of time. So I wouldn't, I would not be prepared to do that. I think we need to give it time to see if anybody else wants to apply for that. Has it, just at our last Has meeting. anyone sent anything in? I just. Just Alyssa Morrison asked to be considered for the alternate seat as well. When could we appoint? I'm just concerned about having a big gap. I mean, we could even potentially have it close and say it's closing. For our next meeting, or I know you're always well, yeah, we wait until the I mean, end of what, August. What's the what's the normal period? I mean, some some I, some uh, appointments and reappointments are made without anything. Not for planning and zoning, um, and this is a big one. I would not be comfortable doing that. I think that'd be extremely inappropriate to cut this off without letting anybody know that they didn't have a chance to apply for alternates. I mean, that just came up at our last meeting. Yeah, I mean, he's still technically in the seat until. July 31st, which I know is next week. Yeah. After yeah. our next meeting. I mean, before and it's, a, and it's an alternate, and we have other alternates. So, so the people that are currently applying can just can they just email if they're interested in yeah, the alternate position and just say I'd like to be considered for an alternate. They don't yeah. have to be. But not every. But again. she's the only one who did. So we right. couldn't say unless we were picking her as the alternate. We couldn't just say, oh, we're going to give this to you know Fran or John or Bennett. Like they didn't. Asked to be that, so 
So they have to ask to yeah, be you have to alternate. ask to be an alternate because some people don't want to be an alternate. They only want to be a regular member. Um, but if you, but any any motion, except for Bennett, but if any of the three of them wanted to do it, they like Alyssa, they could just email yep. and say, okay. I'd like to be considered for the alternate position. Okay. But Ben made a motion, so I'm a, I'm a no on that. But yeah. I mean, I actually was hoping to ask the same question because I was hoping that we could get it appointed and filled now. But if legally we can't, I, I, we, I just think it's it. ethically. I mean, the, none of those other people who applied, two of the other people who applied, didn't get a chance to say if they want or are interested. And we haven't said it's closing, so people might be looking at it and interested in it, and they were cutting it off at this meeting without any notice. I feel like that would be highly um, irregular. Okay. okay. I mean, right. yeah, we've never done that before. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, I, yeah, I, I want to make it fair for everybody, obviously, but, but um, and we have other alternates. We have we other can. more experienced oh. alternates too. So I mean. As of today, we have two alternates, depending how we vote. You know, we might have one, but we might also still have two. So they would get seated if anybody wasn't there before a brand new person. OK. All right. But, no, I had hoped like then that we could just move it along. But I understand if it's still open, and yes. then people could stay. And I mean, I, yeah, I would be, I'd be very uncomfortable doing that. Because I'm. <laughs> I already thought about some of All right, that's fine then, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sorry. Can't just put somebody in there who hasn't applied for the seat. Do you mean? Okay. So, like, Alyssa's the only person who's applied, so unless I don't know what you guys are thinking about, that's obviously a big part of our discussion, but um, yeah, I don't think that. I, I mean, so, it's up to you, because I don't support it, Ben does, so. I'm, I'm very torn because I do support it, but I don't support cutting it off if we think there are other interested people. I think there have been I mean, over, if we've yeah. said it's open for another week, then I, I think you're right. We have to keep it open for another week. But, uh, it's, not we, I mean, it's not yeah, yeah, it's it's doesn't specify. specify. That's, what I, that's what I want to know. Yeah. Um, we would just, I want to know what the, you know, right, what's so the... I can explain. Yeah. So yeah. Um, his, his seat, he told us he was resigning July 31st. So... I would open it up on the website to say we're accepting applications for that alternate seat. We typically give it a timeline, so it might be we could shorten it and give it a couple of weeks just to see if we get anybody else interested. Like I said, Alyssa already reached out after a couple days ago it. to say if, I, if she's not selected for the planning and zoning regular seat, she's also interested in the alternate seat. There might be other people who are possibly interested in that alternate seat that you're preventing Have them from it. having an interest okay. in it. Right. I think that would be really bad. Okay. Well, no, I understand that. Her. Okay. I, I just would like to see the period shorten sure. we can. and then reach out to the other applicants that might not get selected tonight to say, are you interested in that? Yeah, so we can. Without we having to do, do another round of interviews of the They same would not have people. to interview. They wouldn't have to, but should okay. someone else come yeah. forward, okay. of course, right. we would have to interview them. Yeah. No, I, I don't want to cut somebody else off who might. And just to, just to Ben's point about interviewing, there are, um, you know, there, you're correct. Like, there are people that we don't interview, but normally they're not in a regulatory position. They're not making regulations like any zoning does. So um, and I think we that's made, been We make a policy change when we started that, even for non-regulatory board, if there was more than one person interested in the past, the first second would just make the decision and bring them forward. We made the decision as a board to change that so the board could have more input. So anytime, even if it's you know, a non-regulatory board, but we have more than one person interested, we allow them to come forward and interview in front of the whole board. But, but to be clear, since it's just a policy decision, it could be changed. Yeah, it if, definitely could if, be. If two yeah. was decided. Yeah. Okay. Although, it, yeah, I just feel I understand the point, though. If it's open and we haven't given anybody else a chance knowing that it's going to be cut off. But I would like to shorten the period so we don't get a gap with no, you know, with no alternate. You just, just to remind you that I will be absent for the first meeting. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, don't ask me. And we can talk more because you can do what she did when she missed a meeting if you do want to fast track it and do interviews and we record them and then you watch them and then we vote at that end of August meeting or if you want to be there then we could do something different. So you can think about it. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, all right, 
So we're back to ethics. Thank you guys for waiting. Um, first up, we have Don. Yes, thank you. If you want to come forward and you can just um, introduce yourself for the record, and then we're going to ask you the same. They seem like a lot of questions, but some of them are just legal. You understand that legal questions that we just ought to check in on. Um, so, yes, we'll hand it over to you. Uh, my name is Don Steinhoff. I live at 58 Miss Tuxedo Avenue in Mystic. Thank you very much, and thank you for your interest. Um, Debbie, do you want to do the first? Sure. What do yes. we do? Three? The first three? Of yeah. <laughs> Um, we'd, we'd like to know what pertinent experience you have in a professional or volunteer capacity, and in responding, please expand on prior experience you have with investigations, if any. Um, so my background, I am uh, a retired attorney. Um, I've worked in human resources uh, for the last 11 years, I retired last year, excuse me, for the last 11 years in Ledger. Um, since then, I have done some additional consulting, um, most recently for the town of East Lyme, for an investigation within that town on issues in the fire department. Um, so I, I've, I've got you know, a long track record of uh, that type of, you know, type of work, so um, that answers your question. No, no, that's great. <laughs> What is your opinion of the responsibilities and primary function of the Ethics Commission? Um, from having briefly read the, um, the resolution, uh, it, clearly the, it is to uh, objectively review the complaint and to interview uh, whatever, whoever, whomever has felt necessary to, for, to, um, to, to put all the pieces together and come together, to come together along with the rest of the commission members for a decision. And the third one, please describe, and you talked a little about this in your first answer, but you can expand on it. Please describe what skills and experience you would uniquely bring to the Ethics Commission. Um, I, I try to remain uh, in, in all my work, sort of, you know, in a very neutral position. Um, I think that would be helpful. Also, just um, my ability to sort of organize, thought and organize thoughts or organize um, issues. Uh, you know, categorize things like that. I think that would be helpful. Um, I, obviously, my legal background would, would have some uh, some um, relevance to this visit to this position. So. Thank you. Yep. I just did the three. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, and on your phone. Oh, yeah. I can't find it. Yeah, here it is. Computer's too slow. Four and five. Four and five. Um, have you read the Ethics Commission ordinance and do you understand the roles, responsibilities of the commission as well as the timeline for the process? I do. Uh, I did, as I mentioned, I actually said this afternoon quickly. And I looked at it when uh, I was made aware that there was an old, the commission was going to be formed or put in place for the first time. I believe that that's correct. Um, so I looked at it then and I sort of skimmed through them again this afternoon. I, I, I'm pretty comfortable with the process. I, I, I sort of have a question if you which came up to this afternoon, it requires it to be done within 90 days. And I did, wasn't specific, but I understand, I would understand it to be from the date of the complaint. No, it's from the date of the seating. Of the seating, thank you. Okay. Uh, should you be selected for this commission and are made aware of the complaint, can you confirm, confirm that if you are connected in any manner to the complainant or subject of the complaint, that you will immediately step down from the commission? Definitely, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no fuzzy. No. Are you hearing like a fuzzy yes. feedback? Okay. <laughs> okay. Just from me. Oh, right. We'll go through. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know why. Maybe don't raise them. I don't okay. know what's going on. They told me they fixed them. Are enough. you aware of the complaints? Sorry. Are you aware that the complaints and the parties must, by state law, remain confidential unless the commission finds there's probable cause to move forward? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a question. No. Uh, are you aware of the standard for probable cause? I am. Okay, and last one. Can you confirm for the record that you do not have any current ties to the town, including that you are not an elected official, a justice of the peace, holding or campaigning for public office, employed by or, um, employed by or a party to any contracts with the town of Stonington, holding office for any political party? 
I can confirm all of those. Okay. Thank you. So that's our last um, question. Do you have any other questions for us or anything we didn't touch on that you wanted to share? Nope, I just had the question about the 90 days, okay. so thank you for clearing. Thank you, Dawn, very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your work in Ledger. Oh, I have to confirm your party. It's like a tribunal. I'm sorry. Um, can you <laughs> confirm that you are a member of the Republican Party? I am registered as a Republican. Thank you. This is really awkward for me, like 10 people coming down. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mark, do you want to come up next? Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Sure. Same question. <laughs> w oh, sorry. Do you mind? Oh, no, the hard one. <laughs> so do you want to introduce yourself I'm, first? I sure will. My name is Mark Ginsberg. I live at 108 Montauk Avenue in Stonington. Can you also confirm that you are a member of the Republican Party? I will so confirm. <laughs> We would like to know what pertinent experience you have in a professional or volunteer capacity. And in responding, please expand on prior experience you have with investigations, if any. You know, in addition to being registered Republicans, I guess lawyers are a dime a dozen. Um, <laughs> that's what I like. Uh, 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 I, too, um, practice law for a time in, in London. And, uh, that is part of the experience that I think I bring to the Ethics Commission, but I also have served in a fair number of nonprofit organizations um, on you know, leadership roles in, in dealing with human relations problems and different issues that come before those types of organizations. So those would be the kind of experiences that, I, that I've had. Thank you. What is your opinion of the responsibilities and primary function of the Ethics Commission? And that's what intrigued me to apply for the position, but um, I, I enjoyed learning the fact that the commission was established by charter, but not necessarily a standing commission, and only called upon when there were particular problems. And, and what intrigued me, I, I am a believer in, in ethics and, and the need to have very good governance, whether it be in private organizations or in municipal organizations, and that intrigued me, and I like the fact that Stonington News Charter had the capacity to not have this just sitting around, but be available when and as and only if the situations arose, and, and that's what compelled me to want to apply. Thank you. And then, you basically already said this, but so you get the same questions okay. as everyone else. <laughs> Please describe the skills, what skills and experience you would uniquely bring to the Ethics Commission. Yeah, I'm not sure the skills are, are unique. I'm, I'm sure they're, they're shared by others as well. But I, I have had uh, professional experience uh, from my time at, as a lawyer and my involvement with these organizations. It spanned a number of years. And as I, as I get older, I like to think that just some of that time and experience benefits me in my thinking and decision making in a lot of ways. And I think this is an opportunity where uh, those same skills and experience can be applied. Can I just ask you to just expand on that and tell us some of those organizations that you know? Sure. And, and I don't know if you, if I happen to bring along just a, a, a bio of the experiences. Uh, sure, I think there are three copies there. But, um, for a number of years, I've been involved with the Ocean Community YMCA, serving as a director and as an officer. The Stonington Free Library, and so, uh, for many years on, on the board there, and, and served as its um, as its treasurer. And uh, the Community Foundation, and Don has had some experience with the Community Foundation, but I, I, I trustee emeritus there, and, and, and formerly served as its treasurer as well. Thank you. Um, next question. Have you read the Ethics Commission ordinance and do you understand the roles and responsibilities of the commission as well as the timeline for this process? I, 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 I did and uh, I do. Uh, should you be selected for this commission and are made aware of the complaint, can you confirm that if you are connected in any manner to the complainant or the subject of the complaint, that you will immediately step down from the commission? Without question. Um, are you aware that the complaints and the parties must by state law remain confidential unless the commission finds there is probable cause to move forward? I, I really do appreciate the confidentiality and the nature of the, the legal
legal practice, the, the client attorney privilege is, is the first thing that is hammered into you when you start. And, and I so appreciate the need for confidentiality, particularly when we start, we're starting with a complaint, there's been no finding of probable cause, and it's only at that point where it proceeds from there that, that things are, are not kept confidential. Thank you very much. And then, sounds like this, you're aware of the standard for probable cause? Yes. And then the last one, can you confirm you do not have any current ties to the town, including that you are not an elected official, justice of the peace, holding or campaigning for public office, employed by or a party to any contracts with the town, or holding any office for a political party? I can confirm I'm not. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you all very much. Now we're going to go through the rest of our meeting, but just so the um, people are aware, um, we do have on our agenda to do appointments for the Ethics Commission. If you guys all feel like you are ready when we get there, or we could adjourn for a few minutes if you want time to collect your thoughts and, um, and go through that. So when we get there, I'll ask you again. So, OK, now, any public comments? If you want to come forward and say your name and address for the record. So, for the record, Tracy Swain, Pocket Talk. So, a couple of things I want to talk about. Monday night's meeting, nice meeting, nice fact that we're in the air conditioned building. But if we have to have another town meeting, can we have it in another space where the acoustics is a lot better? Because nobody could hear a single thing from anybody that spoke, including people in the back couldn't hear me, which was a surprise. <laughs> because normally nobody, everybody can hear me. But if we can, moving forward, I ask that the select board find another location for a meeting. That's one. Um, two, uh, the zoning rewrite. I know I touched base on it the last time I spoke with you guys. They're again having a meeting, I believe, later tonight, or no, tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow, whatever it was, yeah. Um, again, Zoom, um, social media is blowing up. People in town are like screaming, why is this again on Zoom? I know you guys have maybe have seen some of that, but they continue to do that, and I've asked, is there a way for this? I mean, look, I get the rewrite and everything, and I have issues with it myself, but can we just get them to do it in person so people can speak and ask questions in person. People aren't going to do that on a Zoom. So that was that. And then my third thing I wanted to talk about was um, that you are coming on your, um, in your agenda, the, I think it's like the last item or something, whatever number it is. Um, I am in support of the town eliminating the lien on the 6 Mechanic Street property. Um, I kind of feel it was the responsibility for the town back in August of 2018 to make sure that that lien was paid for before that property was transferred over to a new owner. Um, and yes, the new owner that currently I know is in here has done a lot of work to all of that property that he did purchase, and I just think that you should release that lien. So. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. Any other public comment? Um, I'll address some of these things in my comments at the end, hopefully if we have time, it's not midnight. Um, okay, so... Could I get a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of July 10th, 2024? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, one question, perhaps is a really simple answer to it. Uh, if tonight's regular meeting, and it was July 10th also a regular meeting? When do we have, so the two meetings a month, they're both Regular, okay. yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, it's I'm not sorry, I'm confusing with planning. Yeah. Yeah. It's because we also have so many special meetings. That's my fault, so. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, all right, no. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Stacy. So under correspondence, we received notification from Ryan DZ requesting reappointment to his second term on PZC. We also received notification from Jessica Cerullo that she will not be seeking reappointment when her term ends on the Cultural District Commission, which expires at the end of this month. So we'll, um, we're actively we'll be looking for uh, uh, someone for that seat, if anyone knows of anyone. Um, and then, that's it under correspondence. John Godin. Oh yeah, John Godin withdrew his application for the Ethics Commission. Our questions were although redundant, helpful, because it triggered him to realize um, as a moderator he does get a small stipend from the town, so he felt like he should withdraw. Um, 
but we have asked him, as I'm sure we'll ask others, uh, to please consider openings on other uh, boards and commissions that we have. So next up we have appointments, <laughs> reappointments, resignations. So the first one that we have is the Ethics Commission. So I do just want to ask you guys, do you need a couple minutes? Because we could recess, or if you feel like you know, um, we can go right into it. So you just let me know. I'm actually ready to, but if Ben needs some more time, I'm happy. No, I, I, I think I can go move ahead. Okay, Debbie, do you want to start and then we sure. go to Ben and then me? And I had a question. Yeah. Um, I have a list of eight, because I understand there's five regulars, three alternates. Are we supposed to call it who's an alternate, who's a regular? Yes. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you. All right. I may need, I may need, need to find my notes. Okay, take your time. No, got it. Oh. Okay. We can go ahead. All right. Honestly, I didn't really think too hard about who's a regular or who is an alternate. So, but um, here are based on the interviews. Um, yeah, the you want me to start with just your eight, and then we can narrow it down. If that's yeah. Easier. I mean, if it works for you, I can give you my eight. Okay. Um, um, so the eight that I'm recommending are Linda Camelio, Robert Taylor, Jean Meyer, Laura Jackson, Mark Ginsburg, Don Steinhoff, Zach Buda, and Jody Kubachka. Do you want to say anything about them, or you want to wait um, for Ben to go and then? No, I can um, just wanted to comment that I know that it wasn't kind of required to not have anybody who's on a town political committee, but I considered that, you know, something, I, I did consider that. So when I was looking at the balance of people, I'm looking to balance by where they live in town, by their experience. Um, I love the idea that a lot of them have not previously served on committees and they just, you know, thought this was an interesting way to share their skills. I really appreciated that. Um, and so I, I actually kind of, for my own purposes, eliminated the three that are on political committees. Not that I think they do a bad job, but I just feel like that makes this a little more political and I'm really hoping that it's non-political, you know, unbiased. Can you, can you just state who those three were? Um, those three are Karen Moore, David Klein, and Randy Murphy. Randy, Lee. Randy Oh, Lee. I'm sorry. Randy Lee, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David's like, wait, did we just get separated? I'm sorry. She's been Randy Lee for three years. When I first met her, she was Randy Murphy. So. Um, um, and then, um, well, I think that Elise Morrison would be fabulous on the committee. I just was concerned because she's applying for the PNC and for the alternate on the PNC. And I thought, you know, if, if she was appointed, then it might immediately mean she'd come off. So, so that Or not. Or not, you're right. I'd rather so be on that's. PNC. <laughs> 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 or not. I know. I know. That it was a tough one because I was like, so. So that really is my rationale. But I was looking at, you know, balance between where people live political parties and skills, so. Yeah, and I, I used much the same um, criteria. I came up with a noticeably different list, but um, <laughs> yeah. I, didn't, I didn't exclude people that are members of the parties uh, particularly. What I, um, I am purposely avoiding individuals with what I would call strong political ties, I think, and ties to town hall in particular. Um, and they all have independent tendencies, and I trust that they'll be fair and impartial. So my list is Jody Kubachka, Jean Meyer, Sorry, Karen? sorry, can we use the return right oh, now? Sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. Okay, Jean, go ahead. Jean Meyer, mm -hmm. Karen Moore, Zachary Buda, Robert Taylor, David Klein, Alyssa Morrison, Don, Don Stein. All right, so what I can do is I can give you my list, and then maybe where we have the complete agreement we know, or I guess if we have the two votes we know, but we could talk more about it. Um, 
So I first just want to say like just a huge thank you to everybody who did this because I think I mentioned during the last meeting we were very stressed that we were not going to find people given the way the ordinance is very you know smartly written but very specifically excluding anyone who really has any ties with the town already um, and it was just amazing how many people stepped up and seemingly for really genuine reasons um, as both Mark and Don kind of touched on tonight so just a big thank you. And to anyone who doesn't get appointed, hopefully they'll remain interested because we do have openings on a number of other committees. Um, so mine were, in no particular order, um, Laura Jackson, um, I'm just going to go first names, Zach, Jean, Mark, Rob, Don, Jody, and Linda. Um, Yeah, so Laura, Zach, Jean, Mark, Rob, Don, Jody, and Linda. Did you say Don? Yes. Okay. So by my tallies, we have three for Don, two for Mark, two, two for Laura, um, two for Zach. Two, no, three for Zach. Three for Zach? Oh, I missed. Oh, yeah, I didn't put mine up there, sorry. Three for Zach. Um, three for Robert Taylor. Three for Jean Myers. Three for Jody. So, so that unless you want to change any of yours. So, what was... Which, which, one, which ones do we have three on? Let's start. So with we that. have three for Don. Okay. Don. Three for Don. Yep. We have three for Zach. Yep. Three for Robert Taylor. Three for Jean Meyer. Three for Jody. Those are our three. Okay. So those are so five. we have so we have yep. five members. Five. Then, that was five, right? Yeah, that was five. And then we have Mark has two, so that's you know, yeah. enough votes to be yeah. on. Laura has two. Yeah. Linda has two. And is that it? I yeah. think that's it. So yeah. I think. So should, I mean, would it make sense to go with, to, to be fair, like the alternates? The alternates have the two and the other ones that have three. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, so so we, have, we have three, three with two votes and yeah. yeah um, so Linda would be an alternate. Um, Laura Jackson would be. The only thing is, let me just make sure we have the right balance with the five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you can't have any more than three. And so Don, uh, Don, Robert Taylor, Don and Robert Taylor are for Republicans. And then Jean, Jody, and Zach are all Democrats. So that's the only reason I thought Laura would be helpful as a regular as the only unaffiliated, but if she only has two. That's fine, right? We're, fe we're meeting the law of oh, the ordinance, yeah. right? So we're fine. Okay, so Laura will be an alternate, Linda will be an alternate, and Mark will be an alternate, if they're all still willing to. Um, and the other five will be regulars. And then if for any reason, like we said, once you're all seated, you'll find out what the complaint is about. And then you'll, as you guys indicated, indicate if some people might need to step off, and then that's where those alternates would get moved up also. Um, or you, as you guys will work through your kind of time frame and everything with um, the town attorney, uh, if that for some reason that 90 days or the times aren't working for you, you know that's why we have the cushion there. But um, thank you all very much. I'll well, make an official you. Oh, good. motion. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. So I'm going to make the have to make the official motion. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Can I get a motion to appoint? Um, <laughs> um, Don Steinoff, Zachary Boudoua, Boudoua? Boudoua. Boudoua. Uh, Robert Taylor, Jean Meyer, and Jody Kupachka, sorry, I'm probably butchering you again, as regular members, and Mark Ginsburg, Linda Camilio, and Laura Jackson as alternates. So, second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody, genuinely for doing that. And, um, we will reach out. Okay, now the moment we've been waiting for. Another moment. <laughs> Lots of moments today. 
Um, okay, appointment for the regular seat on planning and zoning. As a reminder, we had four really excellent, and I'd say very you know, different candidates. So we had Alyssa, Fran, John, and Bennett. Um, Deb and Ben, if you guys want to share your thoughts on who you wanted or your thoughts on the applicants, and then I'll go last. I know you went first last time. Do you want to go first this time? Sure. Um, I, again, for highly qualified good candidates, um, they all bring their own skill sets. Um, I've had the, the pleasure to work with two of, two of the candidates, uh, John Crew and Fran Hoffman, um, in the past decade on planning and zoning, and John Crew uh, on Zoning Board of Appeals as well, which I consider to be a very important um, experience for, for placement on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, but for tonight, I would like to nominate Fran Hoffman to the seat, the regular seat. Uh, I work, work with Fran in her past role on the Planning and Zoning Commission. She brings the right skill set and also the temperament that I believe is important at this time. I know Fran is a reasonable team-oriented member and particularly is one who can build consensus on, on the contentious issues that face the Commission presently. Fran was also very active in the writing of the current POCD, a process that will soon need to be repeated. Okay. I also echo that we have four great and very different applicants. Um, and while one is the alternate who's been doing a great job as an alternate on PNC, I have to say that in my four and a half years on the Board of Selectmen, I have never gotten as many calls, texts, meetings, comments as I have regarding this appointment. Um, and it's become very clear to me that my constituents, many are not happy with the ongoing zoning rewrite process um, or the recommendations and are really asking to put somebody on planning and zoning with institutional knowledge and understanding of the rationale for the existing regulations. And because of this, I look specifically at the applicants with you know the most previous experience, and there are three of them. Um, Fran, John, and Elisa all have experience. However, Based on her 12 years of experience on PNC, experience writing and revising existing regs, understanding of stormwater and aquifer protection issues, which is a very dear and dear near and dear to my heart, um, and past experiences on the Wetlands Commission, um, and I have served with her on several commissions. I am recommending Elisa Morrison as the regular member of PNC. Um, I also think it's really important to appoint somebody from Pawcatuck as a regular member because all but one of the current members are either from Mystic or the western side of Stonington. Okay. Um, honestly, you know, I was torn because I think John Crew with his ZBA experience would also be an excellent person, and, and if we we're looking to an appoint an alternate right now, I'd, I'd be leaning towards him. But for the regular member, um, I am recommending Elisa. That'll be fun. Um, so, um, first of all, again, just thank you. You guys each had such different, unique experience that all, and oftentimes, which I'll relate back to why I'm suggesting this way, but understanding my vote is probably going to be the one that has to change, um, is we don't usually have many people coming out for planning and zoning. It's so demanding, as you guys know, it meets so often, even more so now, and it's so challenging to find people who are interested in this, these openings. Um, so that's why I was going to suggest sticking with Bennett, because I feel like when we have people who apply as alternates, their understanding is that they are going to move through the process. And I, I'm afraid we're risking future candidates if they feel like we're going to bypass them and the normal process would be after, you know, he's been on there over a year, you know, attended pretty much every meeting, has even been seated, that the normal process would be to move that person up. Um, I know from past conversations, I think you guys both feel kind of strongly about having someone with a lot of experience, and we do have some other really great candidates, so um, I'm willing to hear more, because, yeah, about, if, if, I'm assuming you feel you feel strongly about Fran, and you feel strongly about Lisa, and... <laughs> well, I do, um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, Lisa, um, first of all, I, I think we've got couple of other really good spots for her where, she, where we really need her. Um, WPCA, although there's no opening currently, I think that would be a great fit for her. Same with Inland Wetlands. Um, but even more immediately, we really need 
interviewed somebody on the Housing Opportunities Commission, and she has actually written an affordable housing plan. Um, so I would really like to save her for that. Um, and again, and hopefully she would, hopefully she'd do it. Give us a chance to talk to you and do it. <laughs> well, Debbie, you've made some good points. Anything else you want to add about Elisa or um... No, I, I've known her for many years, and I know you know she's very quiet to do this work and has done it before. Um, you know, and I feel like. Well, she may, would be great in other things. If she doesn't want to be on those things, then I'd rather use her where she'd like to be. So that would just be my comment. Um, no, I appreciate that. And I do, at least I, you gave an amazing interview last time. I don't really know you very well, but um, hearing about all the wonderful work you did, and I think, Debbie, some of the things you mentioned um, about, I didn't think about the, you're always good at the, the chart of the, that we don't have someone from outside of Mystic, kind of, you know, I think three of the members live on Cove Road. Um, because I have worked with Fran and she's fantastic um, and I think very dedicated, uh, but I think also the stormwater is going to be a pressing issue that's just going to keep getting more and more. Um, and the fact that I know you're very highly regarded in Norwich also, um, and that you're willing to give us your time, and I think it says a lot also that you already put in for the alternate spot seems like a very genuine interest in planning and zoning. So um, I will change my nomination from Bennett over. So um, we can go with Elisa, if you still want it. <laughs> Plus you want to be on one of the amazing boards at Ben I'll, I'll add my support for Elisa. We're not going to go wrong with whoever, of the four, four people that we interviewed, we're not going to yeah. go wrong with okay. them. Um, and John, thank you very much for your application. Also, you gave a great interview um, and have done some great work for the town. So, like, we'll reach out to everybody. Um, hopefully, people, like we said, we do have um, other openings already existing on this and other boards, and um, more work to be done. So, um, do you want to make the motion since you? Um, sure. I motion to appoint Elisa Morrison as regular member to planning and zoning. I'll second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Um, okay. Thank goodness Catherine Borchanel wants to stay on the Flood Prevention, Climate Resilience, and Erosion Control Board. Um, so could I get a motion to reappoint her and actually move her from an alternate to a regular? So we will also have an alternate opening there. Oh, so, so moved. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Uh, she's, she's been so. I went to the main last week. She's so helpful. She's been great, and she's been a liaison to the borough as well, and has been a great addition to that commission. So. We might be talking more about stormwater facilities <laughs> in the future, maybe. They don't run me out of town. Um, okay, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, WPCA, could I get a motion to reappoint Rich Cody to the WPCA? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> moved. Exactly. Uh, thank goodness you guys are so good. Thank goodness. Uh, we're going to hear your alternate. <laughs> One day you can get off of your commission. We hope, yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, Jim, thank you. We already made this. We're not going to take this long. Um, <laughs> so, under new business, we have a distressed property lien waiver requested for 6 Mechanic Street, Pocketuck. Um, Jim Lathrop, um, who's here with us for the record, uh, the owner of 6 Mechanic Street, has requested the remaining blight lien of $1,150 be waived as the property has been updated and no longer meets the criteria of a blighted property. Thank you very much. Candy Palmer, Blight Enforcement Officer, stated that Six Mechanic Street has fulfilled their obligations and are no longer considered a blighted premise. I did just want to also share a reminder, which I know, I'm sure you guys know, um, but for anyone listening, that blight fines in the town have historically been used as an incentive to get properties into compliance, but not as a punishment. And traditionally, these fines are waived when, hopefully not if, when the property is no longer considered blighted. Um, so, if you guys need any more background or have any questions, if not, we can make the motion. Don't you just answer my question okay. with your, because I thought, you know, what's the point if, if they're not a punishment, but I understand that. That makes sense. So. Remember, Jason needs to always talk about that. That's fair. Yes, yeah, not a punishment, it's just to be sure the work gets done. <coughs> and any questions? Or? No. Okay. So, could I, I'm going to make a motion to waive the remaining $1,150 in blight 
lean, find that sixth mechanic tree, and we pop a chalk. Second. I did it. Sorry. Okay, motion. I'm motion. All right. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, all right. Okay, we made it. That was way bigger than I thought. I do have a number of comments, though. Um, comments from <laughs> selectmen. Uh, Debbie, you want to go first? No, I'll let you go through yours. I spent so much time between the yeah. charter and everything, I really don't have that much time. So. <laughs> um, I really, I just have one, um, a brief one. The town meeting, um, I heard a lot of complaints, and I know Deb and I talked about it too, of the, let's call it early voting. Um, I hope that in the future we can hold off voting until the end of the meeting or, or at the appropriate time during the meeting um, because it, it makes it uh, meaningless for people to speak on the issues if they can't sway any votes if people have already voted. And, and I think I heard, also heard Deb mention, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that it, it kind of um, brings special interests into the, into the picture because people can just come in and vote and leave and there's not, not really a big commitment to, to sit out the meeting and deal with that. So, so I, yeah. just, I just hope that we can deal with that in the future. I'd also like to get a different podium. So it's not <laughs> <laughs> we can, um, Put some yeah, yeah, we could add that as an agenda item to discuss the pros and cons and be sure it's an agenda item so people can come home, maybe anybody might come and speak too. Fine. Okay. Yeah, no, I'd be interested to hear what people have to say because I agree with you. And, and I think people who vote early and leave take a chance that, you know, there was almost an amendment and yeah. there was an amendment at the last There's meeting. That too. So, they, what they're voting on may not be the final question. So, yeah. and we were we were advised um, at the Mystic, River, you know, Mystic Fire District annual meeting uh, when people came in and were voting like that. We were advised by the attorney for the district that that couldn't be done. They had to throw out all the votes and start again after at the appropriate uh, time in the agenda. Yeah, we can add it as a future agenda yeah. to talk about. We have some sense. time, I think, before the next town meeting because of all the oh, voting that's happening. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, anything else, Ben? No, I'm good. Thank you. Um, so really quickly, so one, um, the exciting thing is our town app is, like, ready to go. We just need a little more time to tweak some of the, like, issues that have come out with it. But I'd say in the next couple weeks, we should be able to go live with it so anybody could help us push it out. But... Um, Anyway, just a huge thank you to um, Stacy and Captain Schneider. I started, as we said, about emergency management, and somehow he ended up taking the ball and running with the entire town's communication channel. Um, and we had a lot of conversations um, with the app developers, and he really, him and Stacy, helped work with all the different town departments and the outside kind of groups that are in there too. I pledge light um, to get all the information there, and hopefully, it'll be a effective tool for communication and pushing out information and getting people a bit more engaged. So I think that's really exciting. Um, and also it's live, it, you know, when it's out, we can still make changes. So once you guys see it and look at it, if you have feedback or thoughts on it, not just our board, but anybody who would welcome them. Um, the next one, this is a bigger one. Um, I'm gonna throw it out there so it's in the, <laughs> Stacey's glaring at me, so it's in the minutes. Um, and then maybe have it as an agenda item once we can do some more research on it. I'm also not gonna make eye contact with that corner of the room. But I had a volunteer firefighter and EMS person come in to see me with an idea. I also not gonna look at Marsha. Um, that a lot, a number of towns in Connecticut offer a partial tax abatement for volunteer firefighters who meet certain criteria. Um, he ran a lot of numbers, he shared other towns. I've reached out to CCM and COST to see if they could help us do more research on what towns do, what, you know, some seem to cap it at it's $1,000 a year, 2000 sometimes, sometimes it's much higher. So there seems to be a, um, but the, the goal the, is, the, excuse me, the, the, the abatement is yeah. $1,000. Sometimes it's only, yes, yeah, $1,000 or 2000 but sometimes it seems to be significantly higher. Um, and then the, obviously the idea is that they're having a hard time with volunteers and recruitment and retention. So you know, it's a way to get people um, more engaged in that because, and then he also showed us some, I think, some really useful numbers showing you know, if you have to move to a more professional force or privatize it or take it in as a town, 
just how much that could cost. So it was just one kind of creative idea. So I will be doing more research on that. Um, but if you guys have specific questions you want me to look into, you could shoot them over to Stacey. Okay. Yeah. And we'll obviously, this will take some time. And then eventually, if we did choose to pursue this and move it forward, it would eventually go to a town meeting for voters to decide on. Because I know now there is a, some, it's not really an abatement for the military. I know veterans get um, something. And yeah, I think this one is a tax dollar amount, so it might involve W-2s. Okay. I, I can't remember, it's been a while since I looked at this, but it's it's an actual dollar amount, not an exemption. Not an exemption. So it's a different. Okay, so it's different than that. Okay. okay. No, I think it makes sense, but I think we should research yeah. because, and clearly explain the difference between perhaps paid, you know, we have paid police and fire versus a volunteer, volunteer yeah. and, and do you look at EMTs? That yes, work? you can, you know, the state staff shows firefighters and EMTs. They have to keep okay. track of their hours and, okay. and other information, so it's a okay. process. No, I, I think it's worth looking into. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's worth looking into. I, I, I just, uh, I think it's a slippery slope. I, I, I understand the need by all means, and uh, volunteer fire, firemen, in particular, are having a hard time living in town now, and it's hard to recruit them. So I, I'm all in favor of doing whatever we can for them. But, um, I probably will have questions about the tax bill. Yeah, and if you have, if you think of questions, especially which will be the next meeting, um, in the meantime, you can send them to Stacy, and I can add it to my research list. Um, and we'll, but yeah, more thoughts are, and anyone can reach out with questions or ideas. Um, so that's one, and then while we're on the topic of fire, uh, we had a. Uh, meeting in this room uh, last week um, that again Captain Schneider led with Officer Sudman about um, fire radio systems. It was a very long but productive meeting, um, so about three hours, and went through kind of the the different options that are in front of the fire departments who haven't yet chosen kind of what path they want to go down for um, the kind of next iteration of their fire radio systems. I just wanted to share that we'll, we're having actually another follow-up meeting tomorrow um, with a smaller subset of them, and then hopefully we'll have a kind of collective decision, and then we'll, we'll you know, I'll share that with you guys just so you're aware, and then um, we'll be talking probably more, a little bit more with the Board of Finance about it, as it likely will have, might have some financial impact for the next fiscal year's budget, um, but it all kind of depends on what direction they want to go. Who was representing the fire department? Each of the fire chiefs came, um, as well as some of them brought additional members. Um, and then also Michael Sheffers of Borough Warden came, um, and one member of Wickedy Clock's board came, but he was the only board member. Everything else was the chiefs or their deputy or another kind of uh, author. And a few EMT people came, which was really helpful too to talk about kind of their interconnection with all this. So again, I just want to a big, big thank you to Captain Schneider and Officer Sudman. Um, this sort of falls under Officer, you know, sorry, Captain Schneider's emergency management director role, but it really snowballed. It has been two years of an extensive amount of work um, that has gone into researching and looking at everything, and it was just um, they've they've done a really great job, and um, really appreciative of all that they've put into this. Um, so we will I'll share more when we have more information on that. Then, um, in terms of what was the, um, there's a few other things. I think most of them can wait. Um, I did just want to also say, just on the planning and zoning updates, um, we have had a number of meetings. Um, people have taken us up on the offer to come in and meet. Um, one was with the chair of planning and zoning and some residents who shared concerns at our previous board of selectmen meeting. And then um, another one was with our town planner and then. Um, uh, a couple other residents representing a larger association. And I'd say, I think these meetings have been really helpful. We've gotten very nice email feedback. Um, this has all been probably in the last week plus. So anyone else who has concerns, you know, please do reach out. Um, you can go right through the planning or to the chair, or if you feel like you need you know, other involvement, I'm, I'm there, that's why I'm there to be um, helpful. Um, but I think that they've, again, tonight they'll be discussing more about process and kind of the idea we can always improve on process and get input and feedback. And there was also just some, I think, misconceptions um, that were also kind of addressed and I think helped just understanding the process and why it's been set up this way and how it can move forward. But I'd say, my take is that both the town planner and the chair of planning and zoning have been extremely receptive to feedback um, 
And so if you hear, like you mentioned, from other people, they like definitely direct them to connect directly okay. because you know they're putting you kind of in the middle, which is fine, you know, they're your constituent, but if they want to improve the process, they need to talk to the people making the decision. And, and what's the chance of it not being a Zoom meeting? Because so that's really not being a Zoom, Zoom meeting. meeting. It's really not. So again, to like set up the process, like as much as some people have reached out to say they don't like Zoom, there's other people who consistently over the years have said, we can't get to in-person meetings. Is it a hybrid? Can it so be a hybrid? They could talk. So that's something that they can and you know, could talk about. But I think the point is they have you know the the in-person meeting for discussion for mm -hmm. the kind of workshop style. Then they have kind of the feedback one on Zoom. And I think some people were understandably at first when they saw the agenda didn't think that they could speak because it wasn't specified. So we've asked that they specify in it because they said, well, we didn't have a public comment on there because it's supposed to be an open discussion. It's not supposed to be one special time. So those Zoom meetings have been open for full discussion, interactive, probably and more and so. There has been, there's been lots of public interaction. Yeah, lots of there. public interaction. So I think as much as we do hear from some people, and that's a great point about hybrid that could be brought up to them, um, is that it's also asking a lot of these volunteers, as you will know, we'll find out soon, you know, they're having their regular meetings, their special meetings, and now additional special meetings. So, I mean, it's a lot on them also, um, but they gave some feedback about how to do roll call on the Zoom call. It would be helpful to have better visuals on the Zoom call. You know, so there were some things yeah. about that. Um, also, I would remind I mean, we did do Zoom calls and kept government running for the entire oh, pandemic. Yeah. Um, so it's just one step of many in the process. Mm -hmm. And they'd also um, said, and I'm sure we'll talk about this tonight, they were open to adding in additional meetings, potentially of just planning and zoning. So maybe even if that Zoom one wasn't a hybrid, maybe without the consultant, just planning and zoning to connect more with residents. They've also offered to like kind of go out and do just more interactions with certain groups to be sure, kind of like the police commission does, you know, go out and see the actual area. So I think it was helpful for the understanding that some of the things I think had people concerned about the zone changes, the bigger ones, like why, and they were saying, you know, a consultant comes in and looks at it and they're like, okay, 80% of these properties are non-conforming. If we make this change, they could all be in conformity. But then, understandably, as a consultant, they don't live here, they don't know the nuances of these neighborhoods and everything, and so, if neighborhoods and groups are coming up and saying, we don't want that change, we don't care if we have to go to ZBA and get a variance, you know, we're, we're more comfortable with that than being a streamlined process, they're, you know, they're trying to do it to be helpful and to be more consistent. They kind of said it's like planning 101 to just kind of, we don't want that many inconsistencies, but that's not what people want. They're not going to do it. So I think it was helpful to sit and see, like, this isn't being forced upon anybody. It's, it's supposed to be a helpful process to help residents and, you know, have consistency and, um, but if people don't want it, that's why they should engage, and that's why they've given this huge time period between you know, now and spring, which spring might even become summer, um, to actually do any vote on these. So again, these are very much just draft recommendations. So, I, but I would say like it's one thing coming from us, which is again, third, you know, like a wheel of telephone. So I think you know that's why we have our planning department. The, the chair of planning zoning is very happy to engage and talk. Um, they, I think Ben mentioned before, there's no issue with them you know, talking to them, joining these meetings, asking for special things, or if they can't, just put it in writing and they can also get it right to them. Because they are collecting all the like official feedback and the more they get, like they've gotten a lot on the flood look back period. So you know, the more they get, the more they're gonna look at potentially changing recommendations. Um, is there anything else big? I think there's so much happening this week. Um, Mr. Point of order? Yeah. Did you formally close the public hearing? I didn't yes. do it. At 556. Yeah. At 556. Yeah. 550. 550. Um, anything else? I can bring something close, right? Okay. All right, we'll close. And then um, we will communicate through Stacy while you're gone. Thank you. Oh, wait, I'll think. Blessing of the Fleet is this weekend. Oh. Ah. Um, <laughs> Blessing of the Fleet. So tomorrow night there's the fun run um, Then that we posted on the town website. And there's another thing on Saturday. And then Sunday's the official parade and blessing. Um, and it's just a very nice time for our fishermen. And uh, yeah, so people should go. And then if you can't go, you should definitely eat local fish. <laughs> 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 Close on that note. <laughs> Adjourn.